Well, this is an Onkyo TXNR636. And it was actually driven up to me probably 200 miles away. I live up in Chico. This customer lives down in the Manteca area. And he actually drove it up to my drop-off location, which I have here in Chico, and dropped it off. And I finally have a chance to take a look at this thing. And the customer states that it turns off and on. So let's go ahead and get this fan out of the way so we can actually take a look down at the amplifier board and do a quick visual inspection. All right, so just go ahead and bear with me while I move this thing on the workbench. So as you can see, right down there, I see a bunch of corrosion. Also right down there, Oh, this thing is nasty. It's been wet. That might be part of the problem. Look at all that corrosion down there. This side, not so much, but look at that jumper. Try to stand these resistors up out of the way. That has been a definite problem. It's been damp. Moisture has gotten down in this unit, and it's such a nice unit, too. Once it starts stripping the nickel coating off of the jumper wires, it's down to bare copper. I wonder if I can just go ahead and clean those off. But down here, not sure what's going on. So unfortunately, that little uh, temperature sensor is right in the way of seeing what's going on down in there. But some major corrosion going on down on the main circuit board. So can I just clean it? Maybe a stainless toothbrush? Just buff it up, get that corrosion off there, and maybe things will return to normal. I have not even powered this unit up yet. So I did an initial sweep with the acid brush, just dry. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with the acid brush and some acetone. Well, so far it looks much, much better. So I think I'm about ready to power this thing up and see what it does. And I just noticed there are numbers written on the heatsink, A1695 and C4468. So I'm thinking maybe these two output transistors have been replaced already based on what I'm seeing. And I could certainly see moisture causing an overcurrent condition on these output transistors. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and let the cards lay where they may, power this thing up and see what happens. Looking at the HDMI board, I see a little bit of corrosion going on in here. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit it with the acid brush and some acetone. All right, there we go. Certainly looks much, much better than when we started. All right, let's go ahead and apply some AC power and see what happens. Power is on. I have no indications on the front whatsoever. So let's hit the power on switch. So far, so good. And I get no speaker relay click whatsoever. So we must have a DC offset on one of the channels. Oh, there we go, finally clicked in. So since this thing is just warming up right now, I thought I would go ahead and check the bias, the idling current, and see what we have here. We'll have 12 millivolts on one channel, 17.4 on the other channel. And now this is the channel that has been repaired, I believe. And I've got 0.0, .0 millivolts of idling current. That's not good. 8.3, 9.4, 7.8 and 7.8. This is the one that has zero millivolts offset. And I should be seeing something right now. Regardless of where I put the pot, I get zero. That is a problem. So something on this channel is definitely going on. Let's go ahead and lift one of the leads. And I'll attach it to ground. And I see a 0.4 volt offset. That is probably what's shutting the unit down. Regardless of where I put the pot, I still have 0.4 volts. Let's go to the volt range. There we go. 
Yes, 0.4 volts DC offset. That definitely is an issue. So we're gonna have to troubleshoot this issue and see what's going on with this thing. And I went ahead and pulled the driver board out of this unit and I found a little bit more corrosion. So let's go ahead and clean that off. I doubt that's gonna make any kind of a difference, but we'll still go ahead and clean it nevertheless. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the results of that cleaning. I'm still gonna go ahead and check the driver portion of this amplifier and see if I can find out what might be going on. Okay, so this unit has three virtually identical channels. So if you're troubleshooting this unit and you really don't have anything else to go on, just measure some resistance values. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure this resistor right here, 82 ohms, eh, about 82 ohms. 0.7, something's going on with that one. Why do I get 0.5 on that one? Let's check the other two next to it. So 2.7 ohms on that one and 217, 2.8, 217, 2.8, and 219. So why is this one resistor reading way off? Why is that one 0.5? When I should be reading about 81 ohms. About this one right here, how's it test? So I see 32 ohms on that one. 32 and 33 ohms. So what is that one resistor right there and why is it reading so low? Does it have a shorted driver or is there a problem on the pre-driver board right here? Well, let's dig a little deeper into this unit and see what we come up with. Okay, just a bit more troubleshooting. Keep in mind, I have not looked at a schematic on this board yet. I'm just trying to figure out what might be going on just by visual and ohmmeter checks. So I'm gonna go ahead and do an ohmmeter check across this capacitor and I see 81 ohms and this capacitor right here and I see 81 ohms and across this capacitor, I see 0.5 ohms. So I'm gonna go ahead and unsolder that capacitor and see if I get my 85 ohms back. Maybe that cap is just shorted because of the defective output transistor that the customer already replaced. Now I can tell you by looking at the bottom of this board right here, this transistor has been soldered on because it does not look like the other transistors. It's been soldered. And I did test it and I'm not totally happy with the results on that transistor. So let's go ahead and unsolder that capacitor and see if that might be the short and see if my transistor tests good once again. All right, so I have one side of the capacitor unsoldered and right now I see 1.4 meg ohms across the pad, but if I measure the actual capacitor, I see 0.5 ohms. That capacitor is a dead short. Now back to this resistor issue, 81 ohms there and 1.47 meg ohms. That resistor is open, that capacitor is shorted, but now let's go ahead and test this transistor right here. I'll put it in the diode range, 548, 568, 618, open. I believe that transistor is bad. So let's go ahead and pull it out and test it on the MK168 and see what it has to say. Okay, the transistor is in the MK168. Let's hit the test button and see what happens. It actually tests just fine. There's a PMP with 229 beta gain and a forward voltage of 0.593. So I'll just go ahead and throw that one back in. So it is ECB. I thought the center pin was the base. That is my mistake. Once again, a quick ohmmeter check will tell you a lot. So I'm comparing channels. Once again, I have not pulled a schematic on this unit. I see 2.8 ohms right there and 7.4 mega ohms, that resistor is open. So checking this resistor right here, 220 ohms, checking the same one on the blown channel, open. 50 ohms and 33 ohms. So we need a 220 right here and a 33 right there. And then hopefully that'll get this thing back on the road again. Okay, folks, I didn't want to resort to this, but unfortunately I had to print out a schematic on this unit. So over here, you'll see the shorted capacitor that I replaced, the 82 ohm, the 33 ohm, the 220 ohm, and the 2.2 ohm that were all defective. However, the drivers and the pre-drivers over here test absolutely perfect. But unfortunately I did some more checking and this transistor right here, Q5002, tests leaky and I have a 2.2K surface mount resistor that tests bad. 
So there is Q5002 and it connects to this resistor right here, which is definitely bad. These are both 2.2K resistors. I'm gonna go ahead and replace them both, as well as both of these transistors. They're both exactly the same. So I've got those on order right now. Once they show up, we'll go ahead and finish this repair. And like I said, hopefully this thing will be solid.